Crypto presents exciting new opportunities for the investment-minded, but it's also volatile and accelerating in complexity. That's why we created Token Metrics, an intelligent crypto platform backed by an industry-leading combination of data, AI, and media that feeds optimized portfolios to crypto investors. Featuring Token Metrics ratings to help you find the best investment opportunities in real time, an indices page that showcases various model portfolios and deep insights into price predictions and technical analysis, a dedicated NFT dashboard that evaluates NFT collections and assets by our machine learning algorithm to find the most profitable and secure NFTs across all available blockchains. Plus, with access to Token Metrics TV, monitor 24-7 exclusive crypto news and analysis. Whether you're a first-time trader or a seasoned crypto investor, you can stay informed and in control, backed by your all-in-one crypto companion, Token Metrics. <clears throat> Happy Friday. Hello, crypto family. How are you? Hope all is well. Welcome to Token Metrics Live. This is going to be a great live stream. Uh, this live stream is basically going to be an AMA on how to make money investing in crypto. We'll go through crypto investing strategies and any questions you have around that. Uh, let me know how everything's going in, in terms of the connection. Can you guys hear me fine? Is the audio fine? Uh, are we getting comments? I mean, just let me know in the chat. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I cannot see comments for some reason. Not sure what's going on here. Okay, I'm seeing. Yeah, okay. Greetings from Philly. All right, hello. Yeah, for some reason, I, I cannot see comments. Uh, I'm not sure what is going on here. Uh, let me. Just bear with us here. There are always issues. You can you can go live. Okay, here. Let me just pull this up on on YouTube on my phone. I'll just take comments from that. Yes, yeah, smash the like button. We're going live. All good. First in the stream, I see Eddie. What's up, Eddie? Good to have you here. Jackson, Pat, Adrian, uh, not Bill. Bill's not here anymore. Uh, uh, Deray, what's up? Beautiful Friday. Yes, it is. Uh, Kiwi, Rabit, Pat, AAAM, Philip from Spain, what's up? Hola. Um, SCD says, please drop the price on token metrics. We do have free trials, but we are going to be making price changes, so stay tuned, stay tuned. Uh, by the end of the month, we have a big announcement. Uh, voice is fine, thank you. Money Man says, hello, for, hello from Lagos, what's up? All right, all right. So let us know. Um, so actually, let me share uh, the Mentimeter where you guys can go and post your questions. Be sure to follow us on social across Twitter, Tokometrics Inc. Uh, and Tokometrics on YouTube. We've got a podcast as well. Get Tokometrics on the go. Get these AMA questions on the go. Tokometrics.com slash podcast. All right. So Mentycode, if those that want to submit the questions and then vote on the questions you want me to answer the most, uh, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 41424. That's 41424. Or just scan this QR code uh, on whatever screen or device you're watching this on. All right. So, and then we'll go and use that to answer questions. All right. So we've done the audience welcome. Quick announcement. Thank you to everybody who came out to our event for NFT NYC. It was great meeting everybody face-to-face. -face. Uh, it was great. Just talking and hearing all your stories in crypto, your journey, uh, especially how people have made money in in crypto, and also using token metrics. One person shared a story on how they made basically over ten thousand dollars using token metrics and crypto. And it's always great to see how people are actually using the platform and everything we cover on YouTube, in the book, and on the platform. That being said, I will be in Austin Consensus, and we'll be hosting an event there as well. So. For those who want to join us, uh, this is the link. Uh, basically, is we're calling this the Consensus Astro Mingle. It's a celestial celebration of Tokenmetrics, Astrobot Society, AstroDAO, and Tokenmetrics Ventures. So come on through April 26, 6 p.m. Uh, this is the link. We'll drop this link in the chat. Go there, sign up. Uh, priority is given to those who have Astrobots those who hold the AstroDAO token, and those who also have the book NFT. Uh, if you don't have all the, all three of those or any of those three, that's fine. You still sign up for a regular ticket. 
And depending on the on how big the list is, we'll go through and get people off the wait list. But looking forward to meeting everybody in Austin, Texas. The weather's going to be great, great weather. Consensus is the biggest crypto conference in all of the US. So we expect to have a lot of people in town. So figured might as well hold an event. Definitely looking forward to having our crypto family there with us and to meet you in person and hear your journey on how people are making money in crypto. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah. So link has been shared. Okay. With that being said, let's see what questions people have. All right. So first question, are we going down to new lows? Oh, all right. So coming in spicy right, right off the gate. Uh, first thing first, going to our token metrics market page. We have turned bearish, right? So if I just uh, zoom out here, uh, I'm not sure why, why this is. But anyway, as we see here, since the 20th, things turned bearish. Uh, so there is a correction. Things have been going down. Bitcoin is down to 28K. ETH is down to 1900. And the bull and bear now is back down to over uh, to under 50. So it's at 48%. Before it was what, like 76%? We were like pushing almost 80. But now there's been a sharp pullback. If we go down here, basically, I mean, we're still in Bitcoin season. So we're back to a risk off environment. Uh, time for us to, whatever trade you're in, take some profits. Uh, we've So we had a trade in uh, Polymesh uh, that's done pretty well, actually. But we've gone ahead and increased the stop loss on that. So that way, if it comes back down, we take profits. Uh, I use actually the platform to find Polymesh. Uh, apologies, we're having some issues with uh, CoinGecko and our API. So some projects are not, so I think the ratings are not coming in. Um, but looking at this polymesh, okay, it, it's down nine percent, but it, it's been a pretty on a pretty good run. Now, if we see here, it was up over forty percent in the week. It was actually up even more prior. But yeah, I mean, are we going down? It's tough to answer the question, but we're back to risk off. So do what you can with with that data point, all right? So whatever r risky trades you're in, you probably want to take profits, increase your stop loss and just de-risk in general. Uh, so that's what we're doing, because uh, it just makes sense, right? Who knows why the market is correcting or whatnot, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's macro, but things are back to being bearish, so you have to adapt accordingly. Now, things can also change next week, because that, that is crypto. Crypto changes a lot. So that's why you can't really view this as just a full-on bull market, full-on bear market, we're going in bullish trends, bearish trends, risk on, risk off, wax on, wax off, same thing in crypto. So you have to kind of ride those waves as we're going in the market, whether we're going up, whether we're going down. So I hope that helps answer your question. So I, I wouldn't say we're going to new, to new lows, not, not quite. Now, hi, Ian, thanks for all you do. Any new project projects, micro caps that you are looking at? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can share uh, some recent investments we've made uh, on the fund side, Token Metrics Ventures. Uh, so we recently invested in some projects that I think are rather interesting. Now, some of these haven't even launched yet, so please bear that, that in mind. And they are risky. Uh, but Ethos X is one. Uh, if I can pull out the website here. Yeah, so basically, uh, it's a derivatives trading platform we're looking into. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, if we sh come down here, uh, backed by White Combinator, Franklin Timberton, uh, teams also from India. Uh, worth looking into, this is one on our radar. We end up investing in, as mentioned. Uh, one other one um, we invested in, uh, Obscuro. Now, all this was shared with our customers on the premium webinar. And also in the private Telegram group, on occasion we could go through and kind of share projects we're looking at. Uh, most of these are early stage projects. Uh, and then we also have uh, different code reviews coming on these projects. But Obscuro, and this one is also worth looking at. We invested in, in this uh, this month as well. So all these were April investments. 
Obscuro, unlocking a whole new world of use cases with privacy on Ethereum. So it's a layer two solution for Ethereum that brings privacy. Uh, it's a hybrid between optimistic rollups and also a hybrid between uh, privacy and ZK. So definitely worth looking into. Uh, actually, so they basically use uh, TEE, trusted executable environments, basically the hardware chips for privacy, privacy computing and optimistic rollups to give privacy for L2. So this is an L2 of uh, EVM. Uh, definitely worth looking into. Uh, obviously not financial advice, but you can do that on research. Uh, but me personally, uh, it's, it's one I was very intrigued by. This comes from the team that worked and built R3 and Coda. Uh, Coda is basically an enterprise blockchain. So very, very technical team. Um, from our code review, just got a 89% score. So definitely worth looking at. The way I kind of view this, let me take, take, take a back step, right? So investing in early stage projects is very, very risky. Early stage means these are projects that have not launched yet. They've not launched a token yet. They're not trading on any exchanges yet. This is basically angel investing slash venture capital investing. Now, the way we're kind of doing all this is you have to have a framework or a checklist on what you're looking for. We're actually working on creating a checklist for our customers to use for both the investor grades and tr trader grades. But when it comes to your early stage investing, it's even riskier. So if we take a back step, the typical VC, let's say they make 10 investments, like even the best venture capital software, expect eight or nine of those investments to not do well, for you to basically lose your money. on. But the premise is that even though, let's say nine out of 10 investments, you strike out on, you don't make money, or they it makes very little money. You're expecting the, that one investment to deliver returns for the whole fund. So that one investment to be a home run, that one investment to be a hundred X, if not a thousand X investment, that one investment to be the next Solana, the next Polygon. Cause when you get those investments, then those eight or nine that you missed on don't really matter. So you have to be willing to swing for the fences, to swing for a home run. People forget that and end up FOMO Inc. and going all in with no risk management into bad projects. And for example, like that's why we, we like to take a very even uh, conservative approach to even talking about early stage projects. And when I do, I'm going to preface this with how to handle risk because in the last market cycle, well, actually not last, but back in 2018, 2019, I heard stories of people investing 50% of their portfolio into one project, project that hadn't even launched yet. That is horrible. You will get wrecked. Uh, and that is kind of financial advice. <laughs> okay, you will get wrecked. You will lose all your money. That's just horrible risk management. I've heard stories of people taking out mortgages to buy uh, shit coins. That is horrible, right? The way I like to view it is, imagine this. You have X amount of capital. You have to divide that amongst 20 investments, right? So not 10, let's say 20 investments. So let's say you have, this could be for, early stage projects or even uh, non early stage projects, maybe de like DGEN coins. But either way, you realize that despite all your best research, 90% 90 of the time you will be wrong. And only about 10% of the time, if you're good, you will hit a home run, right? So just wanna set that, that those expectations. Once you have those expectations, then you realize, okay, I have 20 investments to make. And out of those 20 investments, I, I should expect two of those to give me 100x returns or more, and the rest to kind of do whatever. If the rest give me 10x or more, even better. But that's the perspective. So even though we're going through this whole process, fundamentals, token, token metrics, code reviews, or whatever, out of the 20, only two are going to be the next Solana and do like a thousand x or 500x or whatever with Polygon, Helium, whatever, right? Because even last cycle. Out of all the investments we made, I mean, at least for me, the big ones were Polygon, Helium, and, and Board Apes with ApeCoin and other Ds and all that. So only three were really big winners. And that's the way you kind of view it is, you're making lots of bets, but out of those bets, only a few will be big winners. But you wanna increase the odds and you wanna minimize the risk that you get wrecked. So let's say you're making 20 bets. Now to keep things simple, let's say you have $100,000 and you're placing 20 bets, 20 investments. So you divide that up evenly. So basically you have five grand to put into 20 projects. That's, that's an example. 
Now, typically, most of these early stage products, they have a minimum amount you have to invest in. Uh, so typically, you have to be a whale, right? So you have to be like a venture capitalist, like we do with Token Metrics Ventures, or you have to have be part of some kind of syndicate, right? So for example, syndicates out there include uh, GCR DAO is one and some others. But basically, that's more for like angel investor, like an angel investing syndicate. Now, you still have to be a qualified investor or pass accreditation, meaning that you have enough capital and you 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 have enough capital to, you're willing to lose, right? That does at least here in the US, that's how it's framed. But to keep things simple, let's say you're part of an investment syndicate and you're planning to make 20 investments in one year. That would mean after your whole due diligence process, these are your top 20 investments, and you're putting 5k checks into all these investments and expecting, okay, this is richer. Right? So let's say that. 90% of these 20 investments, so let's say 18 of these, don't do that well, right? Let's say they do like a 5x or whatever, right? So let me just do some quick math here, all right? So uh, this is our site, by the way, but uh, let's say what? We've got 5,000 times 18 is 90K. So we have 90K. On 90K, we do what? Let's say we're doing like a, a 10x. That's basically nine hundred thousand dollars. So we we turned out of the hundred k, we've done a nine x just on those investments. I would say if if we can get a ten x on those nine investments average, that's pretty damn good. Now let's say we don't do that. Let's say we're doing like a five x, right? So let's go. So that would be ninety thousand times five x. That's like four fifty k. Now, if we're defining the time frame as a market cycle, basically from from like the bear market to the bull run, let's say market cycle. Let's say we're we're accumulating from now till the Bitcoin halving, which is basically twelve months. So we have twelve months to make twenty investments. Let's say that's the case, as angel investors via a syndicate or what what have you, or even as a VC, right? Between now and Bitcoin halving is the time to make investments and accumulate, and then post halving, wait to reap our rewards. Right, so getting a 5x is pretty low. 10x, I think, is reasonable between post, let's say, one year post Bitcoin halving. So basically, we, we have two years to get these returns. So I think that's reasonable. Now, if we go and say, okay, you know what? But those two investments we made, what, uh, 5k in, let's say one did a uh, 100x. That's half a million right there. And let's say two of them did a 100x. Right, so let's say we got the album dollars, so 5k times two, uh, put into those that end up doing 100x minimum. Let's say average is 100x on both, right? That's a million dollars. So we get a million plus the 100 plus the 900k, that's 1.9 million. Let's call it 2 million even. So basically, we have turned uh, 100k to 2 million. That's basically a 20x return on average. So just having 200 x does that. But now let's expand even more, right? So like, for example, Helium and Polygon uh, did over 400x return each, right? So if we say that, uh, let me go back to my napkin math over here. We got $10,000 times uh, sorry, I can't see the comments. Let me just see if you guys can see this. Yeah, so ten thousand dollars times four hundred x. This is where we're, we're getting to life changing money. So those two investments, if both of them did a four hundred x, which is possible, it's happened before. You turn ten grand to four million dollars. Then you add in the nine hundred grand from the other investments. You basically made five million. So you've turned your portfolio, you've 50 x your portfolio. So by, so to kind of recap, you have a portfolio, you make 20 investments, that's 5% max of your portfolio into each investment. And if you target getting two projects out of those 20 that give you 400 x returns or more, and then the rest, you just average a 10 X, you can 50 X your portfolio. So if you put in, as we said, a hundred, K, you can get to, we said what, five, 5 million? So I want you to kind of understand how the math works. So by default, you have to swing for the fences and then hope that, so the way I kind of view it is, you're trying to swing for 
products that can do 100x return or more, and worst case can do a 10x return or more. And so the, the floor should be a 10x, and then the upside should be infinite. So whatever you're you're investing in, you have to look at at a minimum, can this get me a 10x return? So once you understand that, that can frame how you're investing. And you manage the risk by never putting more than 5% into any project early stage that hasn't launched yet. If you do that, you're kind of setting yourself up for success because you would literally have to bob on 20 investments to lose all your money. As opposed to how some people just ape into projects and put 50% of their portfolio into one coin. And those people end up getting wrecked, then they get mad, they get mad at me, and I'm trying to prevent all that. Right? So you manage the risk, at most 5% in, into any project. And th th this is not just aping it into any coin. This is after going through and doing the research on all these projects. So that's kind of the, the framework we have. I encourage you to, to follow us and join us at tokenmetrics.com, get a free trial. But let me check in with the chat and see how we're doing here. Hey, what's up, Barry? Good to have you here. What are your thoughts on Coinbase moving out of the US? I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, regulators are killing crypto in the US. I mean, Gary needs to go. Uh, I shared this on Twitter. Um, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Gary for Made Man. But it makes sense. I mean, they're, they're basically, they got a license, to my knowledge, uh, in the UAE. Dubai is becoming a crypto haven. All, almost every exchange now has offices there or has established a hub there. And they're licensing crypto. So it makes sense for, for an exchange to be there. And you can make a lot of money running at the Rivers Exchange. I mean, FTX, Bybit, all these are making money. So of course, Coinbase, a publicly traded company that's, that's had a pretty bad run publicly with their stock, is looking for ways to give back value to shareholders. And why not launch an ex any, a new exchange to make money on derivatives? So why wait around for clarity in the US if it's taking forever? If you can go abroad in Dubai with this clarity and basically go where you're being celebrated, not where you're being tolerated is an old adage. And that's what Coinbase is doing. So I think it's a great move on their part. Uh, the question is, can they get market share? Now they have to compete with all these other extremes out there, uh, Bybit, uh, Binance, KeyCoin, OKX, uh, Huobi, Derbit, but we'll see. All right, so back to the AMA here. All right, you think Gensler is going to get fired after the hearing? Or will he at least tone down his stance towards crypto? I don't think he's going to tone down his stance. I think he's kind of, he's going down burning, <laughs> basically. Uh, I think he's uh, picked his side and he's not leaving. Uh, I think somebody has probably told him that got a nice cushy job for him uh, and back in the private sector as he had in the past, because he came from Goldman Sachs, I believe. So he's basically, he's, he's on his team Biden, team Wall Street, team pro bankers. And I don't think he's going to stop anytime soon. He's, he's pro big bank. So anything that's going to scare them or, uh, or anything where crypto would eat into their market share, I don't think that's going to happen. Now, I do like all the congressmen and women uh, who were grilling him in Congress and basically telling him that he needs to give clarity. Because how can you expect to have clarity for retail and the people you, you're meant to protect? How can they have clarity if even you, you yourself can't firmly answer a question in front of Congress, in front of the people who are set to oversee you. If you can't even give a clear definition or clear answer, how can you expect regular retail to know that, right? Because if the CFTC and SEC are at conflict, if regulators themselves are at conflict with whether or not Ethereum and Bitcoin are commodities or security, how can you expect the regular person to know? And then you just sue them without giving them any clarity? I mean, I think he needs to go. He definitely should get fired, in my opinion. But I mean, that's up to Biden and Congress. But I hope a big change happens because the US is going to get left behind, man. And without this, it's, it's not looking good. But like, like you're hearing now companies like Coinbase, who are like the blue chip companies in the US are thinking of going overseas. It's not looking good. So a big change needs to happen. All right. Uh, greetings. Do you believe that with today's market, it is still possible to make millions with just investing about twenty to thirty thousand dollars? Something similar to what you accomplished. Thanks. Yeah, th I think it's still possible. I just shared this, right? Basically, 
uh, for those who don't know, uh, I turned 20 grand to $5 million. So the story I mentioned earlier, I lived it. <laughs> so I'm showing how this can be done, but you have to manage the risk. So as mentioned, quick recap, 20 investments that you've done due diligence on using different tools out there. Tokenmetrics, for example, is one, our, our own tool, right? Um, so if I was you, because our platform gives you projects that are trading, but if you want early stage projects like that, Alpha, that's more in the premium group on the webinar where we share uh, different projects we're looking at investment-wise. Uh, we hired a new an analyst, so we'll have even more uh, content going up. We'll not start writing more in our newsletter, so stay tuned for that. But early stage projects, that's where the returns are. That's where the risk is, but you have to manage that risk, right? So going back to what I said, if you have 20 grand, it's the same framework, except you're making $1,000 checks in 20 projects that haven't launched yet, basically early stage venture capital. But you realize that 90% of them will not really do that well. Uh, and on average, if you can get a 10X on those 90, or those 90%, that's great. But let's say, but who cares about that, right? Let's say all, all those 90% go to zero. That's fine. If out of the 20, you have two that give a 100X return on average or more, you're good. You're Gucci, right? So and that, so that's 20 grand out of those two. That's two grand to 100X, right? That's 200 grand, right? So I think that's, that's still pretty good. Now, hopefully you get even more, right? So to make millions, right? So let's say they do 400X returns. So two grand to 400 X return. So I'm just gonna write this here for people to, to visualize. Two grand, 400 X return. That's two grand to 800 grand. And then if you can just do decent with the rest out of the other 18 investments, if you can just not get wrecked, if you can average like a five to 10 X, right? So 800 grand plus, we said what, 18 grand times a 5x, that's like 900 grand. So that's getting close to a million. So it, it is possible, uh, but you have to be really good. And you also have to have some luck as well, right? Like there's always luck involved, but there's also skill involved, right? It's, it's, it's both art and science and some luck, right? So the science part is tokenmetrics.com. Go there, get a free trial. The art part is kind of knowing, like you have to really be in the flow of the flow of things you have to really treat this almost like a full-time job. So you have to be on the ground, boots on the ground, have the best research tools, go to conferences and get in the right groups, Get find that right alpha, even on crypto Twitter, and find those projects, find those hidden gems. So if you can find a lot of those. Now, if you get even more projects out of the 20 that do more than 10X, you can do really well. Right? So like when I turned 20 grand to 5 million, uh, basically I had 200 Xs, so Icon, and Wabi did over 100x return. This is back in 2017 to 2018. Uh, I had Dragon Chain back then did what 80x return. Uh, then I had I think some 50x returns and some others. So we were just swinging, hitting some pretty good home runs, triples, some doubles. Uh, and then last cycle it was basically kind of the same thing, two 400x returns and uh, basically. Uh, Helium and Polygon, then ApeCoin, basically, uh, well, I first bought uh, Broad Apes, then from there I got airdropped with Mutants, then other deeds, and then ApeCoin. I mean, that was like over a six figure airdrop. So now, I mean, now you could probably do even more, right? So I think the how it's different in this cycle, like if I had, back to the question you have here, right? If I had 20 to 30 grand, I would factor in airdrops even more. Because airdrops is definitely a legit way to make money. Like Uniswap airdrop was what, like four to five grand? But if you held, maybe you could have made a lot more. Every time airdrop, if you did that, you could have made it a lot more. Uh, so all these big projects, airdrop farming is a thing. Uh, depends on how crazy you want to go with it. But I, I think you do want to be getting these airdrops. That's something you want to do, right? So the Blur airdrop was free money. So I would look at all these blue chip projects coming up. Right, especially blockchains, and see how you can get airdrops for being part of the test net, being part of all, all these different phases. Right. So, for example, I talked about let's say Obscura. Right. Obscura is, is a blockchain. It's a it's an L2 project we invested in. Right. So let's say they're going to be launching and they do a test net, and if you partake in the test net, they give you airdrops 
free money. All right, so that's why to kind of double down and increase the upside while minimizing the risk. Right, so that's one way to do all this. Well, let's say you, you don't even have any money at all. Guess what? I'll just be doing nothing but airdrop farming the great, the great projects. Right, so for example, we know there was Arbitrum, there was Optimism, we know there's uh, ZK Sync coming up, like all these different projects. All right, um, so definitely stay tuned with that. Actually, there was even a new project we're looking into, but I think the big narratives you have ZK as big narratives. Uh, we'll curate all these and send them out to our customers and our audience. So I highly encourage you to join and get on the, on the email list. Uh, we'll create this. We want to get back to sharing the hidden gems. So stay tuned for that. But you can definitely make get there because if you add investing, which you, if you factor in the airdrops, you can definitely get there. You can definitely get there with airdrops. Airdrops are free money. So I do think it's possible to turn 20 to 30 grand to millions in this market. It just takes time and you have to have a strategy and you have to be committed. You can't just blindly stumble into it. You have to have a game plan. And we're here to be your game plan, whether free via our YouTube channel. Uh, so we, we actually changed the time of the live stream. I forgot to mention that, but the plan is to be going live every 1 p.m. Eastern time. That way it gives us time to kind of prep and do all this because uh, I still have a day job to run, uh, talking about tricks and the fund and all that. But I want to make sure I'm also creating content for our customers and our audience. So with that being said, that's kind of the, the gist of it. All right, so uh, moving on here. Let me just check the chat here. Yeah, definitely be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, not being in crypto is a crypto crime. <laughs> All right, CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap.com are reporting different circulating supply for Astra Dow. Which of them is accurate? <clears throat> okay, let's take a look here. CoinGecko. So that's what I was a project we have been early contributors to. Token metrics myself and other people. Okay, so CoinGecko has circulating supply. Yeah, because this did get updated recently. Uh, 37. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then if we go to Coin Market Cap, let's see here. Okay, FDV is right. So market cap, they got six million. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let's go here. Seven. Yeah, I'm not sure why they have different, but I would say they're basically about the same, right? So I think they, they kind of have different things they're using here. Um, now, apologies, the after that video deep dive I made is still being edited. So we'll have that ready soon. Once it's ready, we'll put, put that out there. Uh, that kind of walks you through what Astrodow is. Uh, it's basically an index platform that lets you passively invest in crypto. Uh, we do plan to put token metrics trading st strategies, so, so basically the token metrics AI strategies on Astrodow for people to, to leverage and use. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but I mean, I think both of them are pretty close. 7.8 market cap, um, 6 million market cap, and FTV 21 million. Yeah, so they're both kind of the same. So I think this, this is fine. All right. Uh, Back to the AMA. Your thoughts on Hive Mapper? Yeah, well, Hive Mapper, the FTV is too high. I mean, they launch with bad tokenomics. Great product, horrible tokenomics. That's basically the, the long term summary on Hive Mapper. Uh, so you have to just kind of wait for the FTV to come back down to earth because it launched at 750 million FTV. It launched with a higher FTV than Helium. Helium that had almost a million hotspots. This new project, early stage, had a higher valuation. Of course, that's baloney, right? Now, I'm not trying to uh, crap on the project. It's a great project, great technology, but horrible tokenomics. So, of course, it's going to go down. Of course, the value is going to go down. FTV 270 million is now getting better, but I think it has to go to under 50 million FTV for this to even be anywhere remotely worth touching. Uh, but as we see here, actually, it's actually gone up in the last two weeks, over 100, up over 100%. I'm guessing because of the whole uh, saga phone on Solana. I'm guessing that's the reason. Uh, all right, with that being said, uh, are we having issues with the connection? I'm not sure what's going on here. This is my YouTube, seems like there's a video connection. I hope it's not too bad. But anyway, long story short on Hive Mapper, great project, tokenomics, uh, not, not the best. I think it's over overvalued. I would wait for it. I would not touch it until it's under 50 million FTV. Now, with that being said, actually, okay, because when did they, 
when did, did they launch? Let me let me see what CoinGecko has for Hype Mapper. Yeah, same thing, uh, but to, yeah, because they launched. Back in Feb? Yeah, okay, let me check coming market cap. And then because they launched, okay, see there's a lot more volume. Was there an exchange listing? Huh. Let's take a look at this because this it was trading on DEXs. Yeah, still on DEXs, but there's a lot of liquidity on Jupiter. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, market cap of 12,000. This is, yeah, I would, I would not be looking at touching this anytime soon, but I want to see when it began trading. Yeah, back in December. Yeah, I mean it's it's basically over overvalued right now. I would I would be careful. I, th I feel like people are going to get wrecked uh, at that valuation. Um, hello, Ian. Just wanted your opinion on regulations in America and if that's the possible cause of the correction. I mean, it it could be it. Who knows? But I think you have macro, you have regulators, regulation, Coinbase. Uh, but at the end of the day, whether the U.S. is on board or not. Crypto is global. Web3 is global. All these companies are still going to build, right? If Congress has to go to, to Dubai or UAE, it's going to happen. This, this rocket ship has left Earth. We're in outer orbit. It's not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, I'm sure some other countries will come in and create a great sandbox for crypto, whether it's UAE, whether it's Hong Kong. I've been hearing Hong Kong is really pushing the edge now, trying to really bring people back in crypto. So this this is going to be here forever so whether the us wants to is basically is the us has one choice two choices play ball don't play ball play ball and still keep innovation here in the us or don't play ball and become obsolete i mean that's it's, it's that simple that's the way i kind of view it and if that's the case then i mean no wonder the lots of countries are getting out of the us dollar as the reserve currency because if this is the end if this is the beginning of the end uh, then, I mean, it sucks, but I'm going to keep it as zero as possible. We're here to protect our wealth, <laughs> whether it's in stable coins or whether Bitcoin or crypto. We're not trying to get wrecked in any currency. Uh, so that's kind of my, my take on that. All right, so moving on to the next question. Can you look into Look So? Uh, can't really look into it. We're having some issues, apologies, with the platform. Uh, I think one of our API vendors is having issues and it isn't leading to us having issues. But I mean, trading wise, looks so. I mean, right now it's a risk off environment, right? As mentioned with the market update. So I would not really be trading anything, although I see it's moving, uh, but I can't really comment too much on this. So let's, let's keep it to more like high level strategy uh, questions, not so much individual token questions. How do I join a syndicate if I have the capital? Well, you, you kind of just research. I mean, there are lots of the lots out there, right? Um, depends on the jurisdiction you enter. Obviously, do your own research, talk to a lawyer, accountant, and all that. Make sure you, particularly, you have to be qualified or pass accreditation, meaning that in the U.S. you have to have made over two hundred grand two years in a row, or have uh, X amount net worth. But basically, that's kind of the gist of it, right? So there are lots of investment dials. Until you have to apply and get approved. So even just having the capital is not enough, right? But it's basically angel, the angel syndicates, right? So you have like DCR DAO is a big one. Um, you have some others, but definitely uh, do the research, find the ones out there. Um, you know, like, let me see, GCR DAO is one that's, yeah, this is like global coin research. I think that you have to kind of buy a token to get involved. Okay, um, uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to go back to my browser. Um, 
Um, what's going on here? Okay, all right. Yeah, so GCR DAO is one. Uh, but there are lots of others. Go out there, do compare them. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that comparison for you because uh, there are lots of them out there. But GCR DAO is one. Meta Cartel Ventures and some others. But obviously, same concept, manager risk. Don't FOMO or ape into anything. Uh, this is probably Barry. Uh, let's not, let's skip the the individual token questions because I want to answer more broad questions. Okay, this is more of a general question. Uh, crypto games will be a thing at some point of time. Any project that you can recommend? Uh, crypto gaming. So GameFi was a category that actually. Earlier this week, that was one of the bigger narratives prior to the whole market correcting. Uh, but the projects we were looking at or that had a higher grade on token metrics for gaming, uh, in particular, were there was Engine Coin, which is one. There was, well, I'm, let me just kind of maybe not talk about trading purely, just purely long term. Those worth looking into, in my opinion. You can then do your own research using token metrics or whatever. But there's Immutable X, there's Engine Coin. There is, like, we can even just go to, if we just go to all the sectors, if we go to gaming, GameFi, as a category. All right, so I'm going to sort this by FDV. All right, so at, these are the big products. So we've got ApeCoin, they're doing the metaverse. Uh, other other side, whatever it's called. Uh, we've got Axie Infinity, ICPs here for some reason, but I would say we've got Step In, Gala, Immutable X, Sandbox, Ronin, Veracity, Moblox, Magic, yeah, Engine Coin, uh, 400 million FTV. Um, so the ones I would be looking at, well, for, for trading, I would then take these coins and look, look at them on token metrics for, to see the trade again for trading. And then for long term, I would compare more so with the investor grade. Uh, but for a, more, a deep dive on, on doing all that, uh, I would just say uh, join us for the uh, Wednesday premium webinar where I do deep dives on all those different t tokens and coins, long term, short term, trading wise. I think that the, we have more time for that on, on the premium call. All right. So, uh, but let's move on to next questions. Hi, Ian, Tokenmetrics member here. Where can I find the token lists you're re recommending for the next bull market for Tokenmetrics subscribers? If you go to the private alerts channel, uh, as our customer, just verify with the bot. You can just search. We, we posted one like last month. Uh, and then it, on the webinars, I also do share uh, the current list uh, as we update it and as we take products off that list. So I would say webinar first, and then we just, we've we been trying to put out more summaries on the webinars. But definitely, it's in the private alerts channel. And I think it's also in Discord as well. So if not, just ask our team, uh, the support team on Discord or Telegram, and they can find that for you. Do you think chat GPT token GPT can be 100x coin in the next bull market? I know, overvalued. Overvalued, in my opinion. Um, we, we did a code review on this, uh, and it was, <laughs> it was not good. This is... Uh, I might call it a scam flat out, but uh, I would not personally put my money in this long term or short term. Right? FTV of 145 uh, million is declining even more. Right? It's down 50% in the last month despite uh, announcing capital. Basically, those, this has not launched yet. Like, basically, they have a website and that's about it. Okay? <laughs> so they're, they're taking advantage of this narrative. But if in terms of, like, in terms of just needing a blockchain and all that, that is uh, there's a lot to be desired, and I'll just leave it at that. So I personally would not be putting my money into this. Now, if you do want to look at an AI coin that we did research on, um, it's Tensor. Although FDV is way too high, 
it's like over a billion last i checked yeah 1.1 billion ftv but technology wise this is legit tech if you want an ai narrative but it's the most overvalued in the sector right but technology wise this actually is worth looking into uh, i would not get it at, at these current prices you will get i think it's overvalued relative to the rest of the sector and the market but tech wise this is actually solid tech versus the other crypto gpt whatever and like if i pull up their site here this is their white paper a peer-to-peer -peer intelligence intelligence market uh this is very technical um, probably not worth for anybody re reading unless you're a phd major in ai but i mean this is solid versus the other one uh, but if we if we compare if we just go to like the AI sector on Prime Gecko, all right, it has the highest valuation. Okay, for some reason they don't show it, uh, but it's uh, where is this? Yeah, one point one. I guess because it's relatively new, but one point one billion FTV would make it the highest in the whole sector. So, getting in now is not a uh, that great unless you think the whole sector is going to pump and do well long term. But even then, it's, I think you can wait for this to drop in price and valuation and become a lot cheaper, and then think about getting this. But this is definitely on the watch list to look to consider. Well, what I would say consider, but I'd say to keep an eye on updates and wait for this to be repriced at a more reasonable and favorable valuation. You think I could kind of answer this regarding Gensler? Uh, what are the top five undervalued positions to add to this in this downturn? Well, I get this question every week, but I mean, the ones I'm doubling down because obviously i'm biased but um astra dow uh, that's my biggest holding um th that's one I, I being an early contributor I, I think i've had more contribution in terms of just where the open source project is heading so i'm, I'm that's why i'm willing to put more in, into it um that's the if i just go back here Right, so obviously I think it's undervalued relative to the whole sector. Did they, did they update the tags here? Okay, let's see what asset manager actually. Okay, like you know, asset manager. So uh, yeah, so currently we're we are fourth in uh, in FTV and. Yeah, I think I think we're we have lots of opportunity, especially once we launch the platform and we have the token metrics data API integration. So that's one. Uh, other products I like that are undervalued. Low cap. I mean, I, I would use token metrics the investor grade section for this, but others. Well, we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, Solar network. Uh, but let me see if investor grade has changed with the, the whole risk of environment. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's, it's, it's gone down, um, but worth keeping, in terms of low caps, yeah, this is one worth keeping an eye on. We have uh, Rocket Pool, there's one other one. Now, uh, basically, liquid staking, yeah, high, actually, that's high trader grade. Investor grade is decent. Right now, very few products have an investment rate over 80 because of the whole market correction, but I think relative to like this versus LDL, this is more undervalued, so worth keeping an eye on. Uh, if you were to tell me, okay, what is gonna be the next, well, next Ethereum, I think it's Polygon, but even though it's still a high valuation, I think it's the next Ethereum. What's the next Polygon? That question, I would say, yeah, it's tough. I mean, most of the projects that, that, that I think are undervalued are the ones that haven't launched yet, so they're even riskier. And we're those are more early stage investing, right? So like Obscura is one uh, we invested in. Uh, valuation relative to others, I think it's good. I think it's, it was like under 59 uh, FTV. Uh, then there's one other 
ZK EVM we, we're looked at, we haven't invested in, but we're looking at it. Um, we'll have more, we're, we're basically still researching it. It's called Ola ZK, ZK EVM. One. Yeah, this one we're currently researching, it hasn't launched yet. Um, I think also under 50 million FDV. Yeah, all of VM and Ethereum compatible ZK EVM. Uh, this one we could end up investing as early as next week if everything checks out. We're kind of giving you some products that haven't even launched yet. Um, that's one. And then there's some other, we've been look, getting a lot of perpetuals and some other products that we're looking at. Uh, we'll share all these with our, with our customers um, in the hidden gems section as we gather more data and finish the code reviews and all that. Uh, but this is a kind of alpha we want to share with our audience. So stay tuned. We are revamping and bringing hidden gems back. Uh, so stay tuned. And if you want to get all that, just sign up at tokenmetrics.com. Okay, all right. So uh, back to the AMA here. What is your take on Mika, the new regulation EU passed, bullish or bearish? How will this affect short and long-term BTC, ETH, and alts? Uh, I heard about this passing. Um, I, didn't, I haven't read the whole regulation, so I honestly I can't really comment too much on it. Uh, but if it's good for crypto, then it's good for crypto. Uh, at least there's some clarity in the EU. The US needs some clarity, because we don't have any right now. Parties are just getting sued um, for no reason. Um, but apologies, I can't really answer too much on that. With all the new layer twos coming out, do you think Matic's time is over? I uh, know I do not. I think Matic is still strong. They've done a great job of diversifying their business, expanding into different things, right? Even back back to last cycle, when they changed to become the internet of, of EVMs, basically, right? And then they purchased Hermes for ZK EVMs and all this. They're always expanding. They have a great biz dev, and they're great at onboarding new products. And we're seeing a lot of good new We actually have two new products we're looking at on the fun side building on Polygon that are pretty good. There's one that's a perpetual exchange and there's one that is um, a, a gaming product, GameFi. So think kind of like Immutable X uh, on Polygon. So, I mean, Polygon is not going away anytime soon. Now the space is getting a lot more competitive, which happens in every cycle. It's natural, it's, it's normal, but Polygon is still, like as I mentioned before, I think Polygon is gonna be the next Ethereum. What does that mean? That means that last cycle, the, Ethereum became a blue chip because you had the whole ICO bubble, 2017, 2018, slash 19. Then you had Ethereum blow up, right? And become really the, the biggest, like two thirds of TVL and crypto is now on Ethereum in terms of smart contracts. Then you had Solana become kind of like have its run as a new L1. So I think Polygon is gonna, so meaning that when I say Polygon is the next Ethereum, right? Cause last cycle, 2017 to 2019, you're basically kind of better off holding ETH versus holding Bitcoin. ETH outperformed Bitcoin. And that's that's a fact. That's, that's a fact, right? I know the Bitcoin maxes don't like it, but that's why I had like 2018 towards middle end. I stopped having Bitcoin. It was just ETH because ETH was a better store value. So now I'm kind of thinking the same thing. I'm not quite there yet, but this is the way I'm thinking. You're probably better off holding Polygon over Ethereum for the next one or two years. Because Polygon is highly correlated with Ethereum, meaning they basically move alike, but it has more upside. Also more riskier, but if you're bullish, the Ethereum ecosystem long-term, you're probably gonna have to be bullish Polygon. And I think Polygon will end up outperforming uh, ETH. That, that's, the, that's the risk I think that, that's likely worth taking. Um, if I pull up Matic, let's take a look here. So this is going to be correlation. Yeah, so looking here, 0 0.9 correlation with ETH and BNB and Aptos and all this. So holding Polygon is almost like holding Ethereum. But you got Ethereum at what? over? Because Polygon is 10 billion FTV. ETH is what, over 200 billion. Yeah, 226 billion FTV. 
so that's kind of the question you have to kind of ask yourself is if it's is there more upside in polygon over eth then maybe polygon is the new store of value or the new well not store of value but the new upside you're getting, getting exposure to eth with more upside potential if it if from now to the next market cycle ethereum does a 5 10x polygon does a 20x or even like a 10x right 10x versus a 5x your money is multiplying a lot faster so those are the things you have to kind of think of because polygon is safe enough relative to other alts where it's, it's a large gap so it's not that risky but it's still risky risky year versus ethereum but maybe the risk to return is worth it and that's the thing you have to kind of factor in right so if we go here so tuning ratio basically risk to reward uh for the signal is 1.8 for eth let's see 1.9 if we go to matic uh risk to rewards is it justified relative to actually let's go to trader it's two so slightly better risk to reward so i mean that's that's a very tough question to ask i know it might be seem scary for some people but sometimes you gotta go back to what i said earlier you gotta swing for the home runs and maybe if you if you want to so out of the 20 investments i mentioned earlier in the beginning of the live stream for those who missed it uh maybe to if you if you want 190 percent of, of those 20 investments so basically 18 out of those 20 to average a 10x you have to think like this right because with each this holding either is not gonna get you your whole portfolio to 50x now it would definitely save you if you're in shit coins right but if you're gonna swing for the home runs uh maybe polygon is your eth or, or some other large cap is your eth that has more upside do you discuss the new products that you invest in in premium token metrics uh yes on the premium webinar mainly is where i cover that and that's every wednesday uh morning all right uh i think we can wrap things up there uh thank you everybody uh, let me just check the chat and see how we're doing i haven't been checking the chat too much um i know you, you cannot still claim uh astra dow that that ship sailed a while back in the airdrop but um you can always just uh check it out on astrodown.org all right yeah with that being said thank you everybody happy friday a uh, happy eat to those who uh partake i hope you enjoy and i uh, will see you next week and as we like to